Hello, my friends, and happy Taco Tuesday. And I know that because Angel has so graciously invited me to speak today. So that for that, I am eternally grateful. I know that she is doing um, September a month of gratitude. So I am very grateful for that. If you don't know who I am, my name is Jennifer Cupcho. My friends call me Jen, and I am a spiritual mindset coach and mentor. There's a whole lot of other things that I do too, but I'm coming to you in that in that area today. And what is that, a spiritual mindset coach? I'll tell you, I have a difficult time with labels, and I consistently, and I mean consistently, check back in. Is that what I'm it's at my label right now. And all that means is that I'm a life coach. And spiritual is really, really important because to me, I know that I am a piece. I'm interwoven with you, with everyone else here. There is a higher source that is also within me and that connects me along with all of you, right? In that beautiful golden thread. And I never need to do anything alone. I am forever co-creating. I never have to feel like I walk alone. I know I don't. And that's what spirituality is for me. It's not related to a specific religion. So in that capacity, I just wanted to let you know what it is that I do. I'm speaking to you today as a combination because some people I life coach and some people I bring in spirituality depends on what they want and they call in. So today we're going to be life coaching along with some spirituality, wherever it gets sprinkled in, and it feels authentic, because I'm going to talk about something that I am passionate and madly excited to bring to you, something that I was not, and I am still working towards. Actually, most of my clients say that they were drawn to me because of my authenticity, because I say that my life is a mess sometimes, and things are not perfect, and this is a green screen behind me, and it's all, sometimes I'm coaching in all dressed up on the top and a pair of shorts on the bottom, and I'll have that be known, right, because that's what it is. It's being able to be vulnerable enough that you may be accepted and may not be accepted by people. So we're going to talk about authenticity today, and we're going to also talk about balance, and how it goes together. This is something that I'm bringing forth this month to something brand new because it's something I got really excited about. And the more I learn about something, the more I bring it. It's the teacher in me. I am actually retiring from the classroom at the end of this month after 27 years of teaching. And I will be teaching full-time to the world. (laughs) So here's what it is. My second set of Oracle cards is, is called uh, Returning to Your Authentic Self, Evolve, Emerge, Expand. And it's a very powerful deck. And it came from, this is where I'm sharing. I'm getting close to being able to share it completely because I'll be out of the school system soon. Out of a moment, a what I call a Phoenix Rising moment, over two years ago, where I was almost fired from my position in teaching. And the way I told the story for a while was out of anger and resentment. And now it comes from a healing place where I can truly, truly see all the moving parts. And those cards were created, were co-created in that moment that I was under fire in a, in a room where there was a lot of power over. So that's what we're going to talk about, your authentic, authenticity, right? And being audacious and being willing to step into that. And until that moment in my life, it was very much driven by exterior wanting to be seen as a good teacher. It's very much how we're run as teachers, our observations, checking off boxes, what people write about us. And so we're always looking for kudos, especially in a job where you're not seen on a daily basis. Your students see you and you bring your A game most days or as good as you can be, right? But most people don't see that. They come in for a snapshot. So we get very worried over being um, evaluated whether you're worthy or not. And so back to that moment where I was actually handed a letter. It was called a rice letter that I would be fired if I did not adhere to what they had said. And the story is not important in this story right now. What's important was that in that moment, my life got turned upside down. There was much power over within that room. It was the superintendent who in all his largeness 
was power over. I literally could see him. It was a moment where I actually started to see um, in many of the messages that I receive and uh, Claire audience, Claire Boyance, this was a moment where I actually saw this large, he wasn't doing it, this large, large man looming. Here's the spiritual part of it, right? Looming over me. And I was very small. And I was trying to figure out what was going on because I could see these things. And, and there was also things happening at that very moment where I needed to pay attention to his words. And his words were that I would be fired if I did not adhere to his power, to his way of thinking and his way of doing. And really what I was trying to bring to the classroom was much more um, ways of dealing with students' anxiety, uh, EFT tapping, if you know, are film familiar with that, uh, emotional freedom technique, uh, tapping, um, breathing techniques, and none of that was being accepted as being uh, relevant or important, right? When you have new ideas, people aren't really happy about that. And so since that moment, again, when I'm talking about being authentic, since that moment, I have gone through many, many lessons. And one of the lessons that I had to face and shadows I had to face was that I was really out of balance. I was not authentic to myself. I did not have the audacity to be authentic because I very much wanted to be liked by my superiors. I wanted to be seen as the good teacher. I felt I was then teacher of the year, held good in good esteem with my colleagues, but that wasn't enough because I didn't entirely 100% allow that to be my truth without them acknowledging it. And so when my principal said to me, and we had a conversation and I said, I don't think he's ever going to see me, meaning my superintendent, as a good teacher. And my principal, who had just left himself because better things are on the way for him, he looked at me and he said, he won't. And that moment in my life was a complete shift. I was extremely sad and also curiously excited. And I walked back to my classroom that day. I can remember the walk all the way back up was on the other side of the building thinking, well, wait a minute, that's not fair. I am a good teacher, right? And then also the duality, wait a minute, what if, what if I did not do things from here on out for someone else's telling me that I'm a good person or good teacher or good mother, or because I was one by the good girl, right? The yes girl. If I can't acquire that, and I already know that that's off the table, what if I just do it because? Because I love teaching, which is what I always did anyway, because I love the students, because I know I'm a good teacher, because I don't look any longer for affirmation from the outside. What if, and that what if moment that came from trial by fire, a lot of us have had those moments, whatever that is, and I call them Phoenix rising moments, came this whole new freedom, the audacity to be authentic to myself. And it also started me on a journey of really learning about the feminine and masculine energy. It does not matter who you are, who you identify as, it's not being male or female. Every male, female, or whatever else you identify as, and there's a gamut, so I'm not going to name them all. We all hold masculine and feminine energy. One is not good and one is not bad. The imbalance is what hurts us. There are sometimes we need to swing to feminine energy and there are times we need to swing to masculine energy and there are other times we need to stay straight in the center and balanced. So swinging is fine as long as there's this beautiful flow of motion. What do I mean by, I, I wrote some down, let me see if I can open it up because I wanted to mostly channel and message for you and see, um, I'll, I'll open up. Okay, so here's some, I wrote them down on my iPad over here. So as a feminine energy, one is considered cynical, as a masculine is considered, uh, I'm sorry, not cynical, cyclical, so circle. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not right. Um, so very, very, oh, like we have cycles, really, honestly, like our cycles that we run, cycles of our life, whether it be, you know, the maiden um, 
to the crone uh, and all the cycles in between, nine month cycles if you are carrying a baby, our monthly cycles, right? So we're, we're cyclical and ma uh, masculine energy is linear. So we tend to look at things in more of a flowish way. And if you've noticed masculine energy, but you can know many, many females who work in masculine energy. So it's not about male. Though I do know a lot of males who think very linear, right? Straight line, A to Z, right? The balance in the middle is spiral. Now, I'm not talking about spiraling down, but I'm talking about because sometimes feminine can be a detriment when you're replaying a story, right? And you're just replaying it over and over and over. Sometimes masculine could not be what we need. We need more of that feminine mixed in where the middle is a spiral, right? You're not beginning where you end in the circle. So the balance is a spiral. Here's another example. Um, reflective, we tend to look as fem feminine energy. Look, and I say we, anyone who is working from the feminine energy, be careful. Again, we're not talking about us against them and women against men, right? That's more reflective. Masculine is more of a reactive. And then in the middle, you have proactive. So this is really, really important in understanding yourself in how you react in certain ways, why you may not be being fully authentic, some of your background, what you've walked through, what kind of fires you've walked through, and stories that you've told or had told to you that this is not going to be worth it, this will hurt you, right? So we choose, we are conditioned many times to choose one over the other. Our parents have something to do with it, our background has something to do with that, and Knowing, I'm always about the awareness, knowing and understanding feminine energy, masculine energy, and the balance between can absolutely bring us to our authenticity, get us lined up like a zipper, right? Where all the teeth connect well. And looking back, this is why I'm going back to that. I'm going to round back, I'm cyclical, going back to that beginning, is I saw that this male was working from very unhealed masculine energy, extremely unhealed. So everything to him was power over. There was no power within. And you've, I'm sure you know people that they try to acquire, you can see it. It's almost like chasing after. There's never enough to fill them. That's power over. That's going to be conflict. That's going to be, what are some of the other things I wrote down? Uh, defensive. Um, competitive, right? And sometimes competitive is good, but not when you're working from power over. Um, insecure, right? That all comes from an unhealed masculine. And so for me, really learning about and continuing to learn because it, it lights me up about my feminine energy and masculine energy. I'm able to be less judgmental of others. I'm, I'm being able to be less judgmental of myself. I'm always working on that. I will not say that that's finished. And I could forgive. I learned so much. I would never ask for that situation to happen again, but my life will never be the same because of it. And I always say life happens for you, not to you. And so I had to go through the grieving and I had to go through the trauma. And it was probably two years, two full years of me talking to the people, my team, the people that support me, my coach, my therapist, helping me unravel and come out on top for me, not on top of for him, not on top for my system, for me. And I was drawn to want to quit during two years of that because it was so painful. But I also knew that that was my journey my hero's journey at that time. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can look up archetypes. It is life. And now that I'm healed, I'm sure there's still parts, parts that light me up and they're trigger like, like little loose wires, but that I am pretty much healed through it. It's now time to go. Not time to go during the middle of it. And so that's my message to you. I do have uh, something that I will be teaching more if this interests you. And if it doesn't, hopefully you got something out of it just today. But I will be teaching. 
in a, a very small three-part series of masculine, feminine, how to heal, how to heal both sides and how to use both sides for your advantage on how to be authentic. So before we go, I picked three different cards with, no, I think there's four, four different messages for us that I'm gonna leave you with, right? So here they are, and then I'm gonna send you on your way. The first one is, in allowing yourself to forget your need to be right, you will forever find righteousness. That was for me, because I walked away from that situation. I was right and he was wrong. He was entirely right in the unhealed place he came from. And he ignited my fire to go get healed deeper. Choose to heal the chasm between your divine masculine and feminine. Balance is the marriage of peace and power. Power is not over. Power is within. And when it is, oh my gosh, the peace is just immense. In order to gain the peace you seek, you must be willing to sacrifice your pain and suffering. This one was a hard one for me because I wanted to hold on to being right. So much wanted to hold on to being right. But until I was willing to release that, the other message, I couldn't find my peace. And the very last one for us is your growth comes through choosing courage over comfort. Curiosity, creativity, and courage can connect you with your divine power. So being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to do the work, being willing to go, ooh, I don't think that's working for me. Not worrying about what's right or wrong. Those words, I'm a language teacher, get us caught up in everything, but that's not of my highest and best interest. Is it of the highest and best interest for me and the collective, not just me? That's, that's where we get caught up in that sometimes. So are you willing to release what no longer serves you? Are you willing to have the audacity to be authentic? It brings a great amount of power within and peace within and around. Have a beautiful day and happy Taco Tuesday. And if you're interested, I have early enrollment opening Wednesday. So I'll pass the link. I don't have anything right now. This is just me sharing um, some of the things that we'll be talking about during our three sessions together. So if this interests you, check back because Wednesday I'll share with Angel the link for early enrollment. Have a great day.